It's just after midday on Saturday. The ancient capital of Kathmandu has been struck by a 7.8 magnitude quake. In moments, the cityscape changes dramatically. Buildings, homes, offices, shops reduced to rubble. Trapping inside unsuspecting people. Thousands of them. Emergency services, overwhelmed and under-resourced, struggle under the sheer enormity of the devastation. My mom was crying, my brother was crying, and we just held ourselves very tight and witnessed the wall just aside us falling down, and we could just hear the scream all, all over the places, people just trying to run out. I barely walked from this, uh, this road carrying my mom um, to this, this location, the small school out here, and you can see uh, many of the people still outside. The force of the quake could be felt across the Himalayan region. These terrified diners fled into the streets when their Tibetan restaurant shook violently. Other images from across the region show the full force of the tremor. And still trying to cope with the disaster, a series of aftershocks that followed brought the same unrelenting terror. <laughs> adding to the considerable challenge already faced by aid workers. We have the capacity of getting uh, water to 100,000 people. So, uh, yeah, this is now set in, a, set in motion. It's trembling. I'm going outside. I'm really sorry. Bye. The injured were rushed to the hospitals that remained standing. And where there were no established medical centers, field hospitals sprung up to offer what assistance they could. The sheer volume of victims requiring help meant they were quickly overrun. Most of them are suffering from head injuries. Like many people who are serious are suffering from head injuries and the chest injuries, spine injuries, abdominal injuries. This is one of the biggest earthquakes to hit the region and it became obvious very quickly that the loss of life would be huge. The number of reported dead rose sharply within hours. My father got injured. I lost my daughter. I broke my leg. It is very difficult now and I have nothing with me. Heartbreaking testimony like this was becoming all too familiar. But this tragedy was not limited to the capital and its nearby neighborhoods. The death and destruction across the valley in remote, rural mountain communities could not even be guessed at. It could take days or even weeks before aid workers can reach these people who are now cut off from the rest of the country. And this is why. Some of the only roads into these areas made completely impassable. But the tales from the survivors making it back down the mountainside tell of a major emergency. The mountain that provides a livelihood for the Sherpa families has become a snow-covered craggy graveyard. Some may never return to their devastated families. Okay, here we have another avalanche. And it just happened right now, and it's from Pomori. Wow, it's a big one. And yeah. it's coming over the hill now. We're getting covered in snow again. I hope it doesn't come here. This is peak season for Everest ascents. Hundreds of thousands of adventurers from all over the world come with the intention of realizing a lifetime's dream of conquering the world's highest mountain. Expeditions already underway have survived and witnessed the mountain shake. Quite a big few big avalanches coming down of those phases. Uh, from here we had a, quite a bit of rockfall. Uh, most of our team is okay. Uh, we're doing well. Some of our team members just moved up today towards Camp 1 and Camp 2. 
we still do not have any report from them. We're trying to get in touch with them. Some people have gone up towards uh, Camp 1. We should hear from them soon. I hope all is well up there. There were more than 800 people at different altitudes on the mountain when the quake triggered the avalanche. Some 150 who had been stranded for two days before helicopter rescue flights could resume at camps one and two have now been flown back to safety. Many know how close they have come to death. So I told the group to get down. It just uh, it was like 4,000 feet of snow, just kind of coming, and there's nowhere to run. Uh, so I uh, told everybody to get down, and then I put my hands over my head and like just bury myself as much as I could. And, um, and basically the snow hit, it was about 45 seconds or a minute for it to go by. All our tents were gone and then like people were pushed, like the guy who was stood in front of me was now 30 feet over there. Um, and we were missing one person that we don't know what, if she's alive or dead. The immediate emergency on Everest may be coming to an end, but the misery for the rest of Nepal is only just becoming clearer. There are thought to be dozens of villages and towns, home to thousands of people that have simply been wiped out. This aerial footage in Gorkha province, close to the epicenter of the earthquake, shows the splintered remains of these devastated communities. Helicopters provide a lifeline. This Indian Air Force flight brings in and distributes vital supplies. And then crucially, it serves as an air ambulance to medivac critically injured villagers for treatment. The priorities really are going to be water and sanitation and shelter, basic shelter, helping people to get their lives back together. It's very important, uh, along with basic humanitarian work on water, sanitation and housing and shelter, to really try and work with families to get children back into some feeling of normal life and uh, if, if that's possible, the way things are around here. The search and rescue phase of this operation is still very much alive. With the right expertise and equipment, the chances of finding survivors trapped underneath the rubble is still good. This young man was pulled out by a Turkish team that arrived in Nepal just 24 hours ago. Bravo. Çoki. Yere bırak. Yere bırak. But every miraculous rescue is tempered by the discovery of yet another body. And there are so many. It seems like every family here has lost someone. We have taken out 13 dead bodies and we have rescued six people. We think about 14 bodies are still inside the rubble. As the smoke from open funeral pyres drifts across Kathmandu, the focus shifts from Nepal's dead to her living. Tens of thousands have lost everything. The international community has responded generously and quickly, but the people here are in desperate need of more help. We need uh, in this season like uh, food for the uh, victims and also for the clothes. And then really we need the equipment. We need equipment for the dozer, like a bulldozer, and crane, some scaffolder. And like uh, we need because a lot of people, uh, people die inside the, I mean the dead body inside the house. So it's very, we need that to uh, pick up, uh, I mean take out all the dead body. This small, poor Hindu nation has suffered from one of her worst disasters. Her scarred capital with centuries old buildings now lying in ruins. The past destroyed, the future uncertain. The roof of the world has been shaken to its very core.